That's good. Those words were hard, but I think I said them properly. Hi, YouTubes. Today I'm going to be talking about something that I feel like is a pain point for all of us moms, and that is the daunting task of meal planning. If you used to watch my old videos and you're confused as to why my content has changed, I had a kind of coming back or rebranding video that I will link right here for you to check out. This is something that after many years of struggling, I have kind of just let go of and in so doing I have found my own rhythm that works really, really well. I'm not the most organized or type A kind of person. I like to have something of a plan, but I really, really like to reserve the right to change my mind at the last minute. And my tips that I have for you today, I think I have about 10 of them, kind of can help you do that, but still not feel like you're losing control of your schedule and your meals. So be can't, I can't, I can't talk. So because I can't necessarily sit down and plan out a full week or two weeks worth of meals and then shop for everything at once, I tend to shop a couple times throughout the week. And if you're cooking from scratch, you'll find yourself doing that anyway. One thing that you can shop for like a week or two weeks at a time is vegetables and fruit. So what I will do is I will shop one of my shopping trips every couple of weeks will just be like a ton of produce and I'll chop vegetables and kind of make fruit available to my kids cut them up too and put them in the fridge right when I get home from that grocery shopping trip. This makes it really easy for my kids or myself to access those things so that we always have fresh fruits and vegetables available. My second tip is to utilize your freezer in a way that sets you up for success. So for example, I always have a few things that are pretty much always in my freezer. That includes some type of leftovers, which I will freeze in individual servings so that they're really quick to thaw if I need a quick dinner for somebody. And um, things like chicken bones. So when I will cook a whole chicken in my Instant Pot, I then just take the meat off. The bones go immediately into a bag in the freezer because if I can't make bone broth right then, I will have a time where I have maybe a whole afternoon, I can just pull them out of the freezer with some chicken feet that I also keep in the freezer at all times and make my bone broth and it's just pretty much ready to go. Um, in the freezer I also like to keep things that might be going bad soon. So for example, I just found a lemon in my fruit bowl today that was kind of starting to get soft. So I'll cut off the bad parts and I will actually zest that lemon and I will freeze the zest in a plastic bag and then I will juice it and I will freeze the juice in ice cube trays. So that if you have a recipe that calls for like one teaspoon of lemon zest, you don't have to be like, oh, I have to go buy a whole lemon just for this lemon zest. Or if you need a quarter cup of lemon juice but you don't have any fresh lemons, it's really handy to have those things just sitting in your freezer waiting. My next tip is to always make sure you have a selection of staples on hand. For example, probably about once a week I will buy the meat that I know I'm going to use throughout that week, even if I don't know for sure which recipes, I generally know what meats that I cook quite often. So for example, I will buy a whole chicken about once a week because I know that throughout that week, even if I don't make a recipe with it, I can just cook a whole chicken and we can use that chicken meat within our recipes throughout the whole week. So things like whole chicken, I'll usually get a pork shoulder because I like to make pulled pork quite often. Um, things like fruits that won't go bad super fast like oranges and bananas, avocados are always something I have on hand, um, kind of vegetables for cutting up like I said. Things like rice and other dry goods that can really kind of enhance a meal or really help bring a meal together when you don't know what to cook are also super, super helpful. Um, things like nuts are really, really good for snacks. They're full of protein and they're just a really easy grab and go snack. So I always have a selection of nuts on hand too. A few more things I like to have on hand at all times are things like ghee and other cooking oils. Eggs, I always have at least one dozen eggs in the fridge because that's a really good last minute or a kind of emergency meal. You can pull something together with eggs really quickly. I always buy at least one package of bacon because that actually stays good for a lot longer than most of the other fresh meats that you'll find. So I'll have that in my meat drawer pretty much at all times. And I bake my bacon in the oven, which is faster and less messy and therefore less barriers to the meat on the other side of the process. My next tip. Two words, instant pot. Over the past two years of me being really sick, I've had a lot of different diets that I've had to kind of try to see if something would work for my body. The instant pot has been a huge asset 
in that process. It makes cooking so much faster and easier and especially when you're really exhausted or have a lot of brain fog and are having a hard time putting recipes together, as many barriers as you can remove, the better. I use my Instant Pot for whole chicken, like I said. Um, my pulled pork I do in the Instant Pot and it is so good. Um, I do bone broth in the Instant Pot and I always get gelled bone broth, which I never got before in my crock pot. Um, I've actually completely done away with my crock pot that's a long story, but my Instant Pot has totally replaced it. Okay, so I kind of touched on this one already, but generally, if you can remove as many barriers as possible to cooking, it will make it seem a lot less daunting and you'll be more likely to try recipes. So for example, if you keep your kitchen relatively clean and try and keep up with your dishes, which is really hard, I have a sink full of dishes right now, it's not always perfect, but generally I notice that if my kitchen is already clean-ish and ready to use, I'm less overwhelmed by the idea of trying to get a project started in the kitchen. Things also like making sure you're stocking things that are going to prepare you and set you up for success, and also, I mean, I'm always scrolling Pinterest and not trying to put pressure on myself to actually like make a meal schedule, but I'm always pinning you know, recipes that I think look really good. And so if I'm in the mood for something new, I will pull something up from there. So just having resources that you can call upon when maybe you do have extra time to cook is also really helpful. Okay, so to circle back to the idea of freezing things to make your cooking easier, I like to freeze things like leftover pizza sauce if we don't use all of it and I don't wanna toss it. Things like pesto if I've made pesto for a specific recipe. Sometimes I'll make extra and then freeze it. I love to freeze things like that, like sauces, in ice cube trays, because then you freeze it in the ice cube tray, you crack them out, and then you put them in a bag. They don't really stick together. You can take just one, or you can take a whole bunch. It just really, really helps to have those things ready. So other things you can freeze in the freezer and save are things like herbs. You can cut them up freeze them in like olive oil in an ice cube tray. That way you can just toss one in your pan, saute up your whatever you're making, and it adds instant flavor. And last but not least, my next tip is to give yourself some grace. Some days, even if you're trying to feed your family a whole foods, plant-based, paleo, keto, whatever diet you're on, some days you just need to have an emergency dinner because you've got hungry kids, you've got activities, you've got a schedule. So I always keep in my pantry a couple of gluten-free pizza crusts and some jars of pizza sauce. We always have cheese on hand and usually some kind of meat that we could put on top or olives, anything like that. So having pizza crust that's ready to go and ideally doesn't have to be refrigerated is really really helpful because those last a while and they'll come in handy when you need them also things like for us gluten-free pasta and we will just add like sausages and red sauce or ground beef if we have it or even chicken um, and it kind of does pull a meal together you can always add sides to like veggies that we talked about earlier just chopping them and having them ready I like to do avocados a lot. My kids eat a lot of avocados, so I will just cut up a whole avocado and they'll just devour it. Um, things like that that you can have on hand to kind of pull a meal together at the last minute. I feel like that's really, really helpful and I think it's really important that we make sure not to get too down on ourselves for not keeping everything perfect and fresh every single day. So those are my handful of tips for not stressing yourself out, but still always having a plan for dinner. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your meal planning tips are, or do you meal plan for the whole month, for a week, for two weeks? Are you super type A and organized? I just will never be that person. Also, be sure to stay tuned as I upload a new video every week. Bye. Like my brain is like thinking through jello. And go. So we can't, I can't, I can't talk. Okay.